Never done this before, but we're doing it today because of FanCred. We are live on the FanCred app, and of course, uh, we're going to make this a podcast as well over uh, uh, for RHAP, for anybody who missed the boat and didn't join us live because we are streaming on the FanCred app. Good morning, Stephen Fishback. Good morning, Rob. I really missed you last night. I mean, what a crazy ending to this crazy, crazy season. I listened to the season. show. You said you were happy that I wasn't there. Well, no, what I missed was, like, Hannah was saying such sensible things that it wasn't easy for me to interject with, like, obviously more correct things. Oh, yes, Stephen, you had such a read on the whole season. All of your takes were <laughs> correct. All of all of the moves that were made were bad because they all didn't They all didn't work because you had said all along chris underwood <laughs> will come back and win the game watch this you'll see yeah, the, yeah you uh, that uh you will rue the day you said i was wrong that chris underwood would win the, this entire thing <laughs> well it certainly was a uh an unexpected long shot um and it's crazy because like one of the things i was talking about with hannah which we've sort of alluded to is the possibility that when this ghost island, ghost island, when this edge of extinction returning comes back, it basically invalidates the previous you know month of strategy. Like it, it all meant nothing. And yes. so it's like, it's true. It's really upsetting to me. The most, I feel like this is the season that I've most correctly predicted at every step of the way, except like for the most fundamental right. part of it. <laughs> right. You had, you had the deck chairs on the Titanic in the right place. They were like perfectly the ordered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let me just uh, really quick set up. So the beauty of being here on the fan cred app is that we can talk to you, the listeners. And so we are ready to go this morning. So if you want to call in, if you're joining us live on fan cred then you just click the black button to uh, join us on the fan line and we're going to go ahead and uh, patch and patch you in let me just also just set the stage because i haven't had a chance to uh, talk with steven at all before we uh, jump into your question so go ahead and uh, hit that button to get on the fan line and then you'll talk to our producer cam this morning he's going to get you all set up and we're going to take a lot of questions uh with the survivor fans uh this morning the morning after the survivor finale so yeah chris is the winner of the season and uh, I listened to uh, to you and Hannah last night on the Know It Alls in the light of day, Stephen. How how are we feeling? Do you feel dirty at all about a person who was voted out on day nine coming back in the game on day th- was it thirty six or thirty seven? Uh, thirty five. Actually, he comes uh, back. I, I, that, uh, I thought that that was the point of contention between Gavin and Victoria. What day? How many days they were together for? Thirty five or thirty six? Well, uh, get, so. Chris definitely comes back on day 35. He comes back day 35 and then and then gets and then Victoria's voted out on 36. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> and so, okay, so uh yeah, 13 days in the game, but what are 13 days? Well, it's true. And really, it's, what a know, four days, but then... Uh... Yeah, yeah. The first few days were, he was so, like, unremarkable. It was funny because, like, Chris had, so, like, he hey, was all... He... Steven, oh my God, oh my God. Tell me, well, tell me this wasn't destiny. What was the final vote count at the final tribal council? Uh, it was nine, nine and four, nine and four, which oh, was yeah, exactly nine and the four amount of days. days. Wow. That's that Chris crazy. Underwood, we should have known all along. It was meant to be. It, uh, Chris actually was eight and five. Uh, so it's a little bit off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, he was voted out on day eight, but, but, um, you know, it, it is funny that in his, in those first eight days, he, he was like, he kind of had this like, oh, I'm playing the middle thing. He didn't really have that much of an impact on the strategy at Manu. And mm-hmm. he was voted off like shockingly early. Like he was such like an, a non-entity that people were making jokes about him and Eric being basically the same person. And, you know, then he comes back and he's got so much charisma. He has so much drive. And it kind of reminded me of when Devin so came back drip. with so much. With what drip drip. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, where he was just like supercharged by this, this second opportunity. If you had told me, I mean, we'd sort of joked about what if someone comes back, wouldn't that be a total mess? Like we had sort of joked about that. I was more okay with it. Now, listen, I really want, thought Gavin should have won. I was more okay with Chris than I expected to be. And and I, I, I'm i kind of delighted with the whole season. Just be, I mean, and, and it's a very, very contentious. So I, I want to hear what your thoughts. To me, it was such an unexpected outcome that uh, the spectacle of it thrilled me. Where uh, I, I love to be surprised, but... I think that this is going to be a thing that we're going to have to wrestle with. Was was Chris the best player? No, he was not. And so well, how do we sort of like uh, we got the thrill of the surprise, but the the best person 
didn't win. And I think that this is uh, something that goes on in uh, in. I, I know you're what a big sports fan you are, but we mm. make it we make it you know crazier that more teams can be involved, and the team that had the best regular season doesn't win. But it's exciting, you know. It's not you can't predict from the start of the season who's going to win. So I think where Survivor is wrestling with that. What what's unpredictability versus right. predictability, and then also something that uh, we talked about a lot with Christian, but the uh, you know the entropy of of it all of like uh, how how great is it to have all that randomness I- injected in there, and what does that do to the season as a whole? Where as you said, we spent so much time talking about you know every move that was made, and most of it was for naught. Yeah. I mean, the thing I do want to say, though, is for people, you know, I think a lot of people, it, it, this is an incredibly divisive uh, moment. I think a, a lot of people love Chris's win. I'll, I'll probably many more people, certainly in, uh, in those that are tweeting at me, uh, feel this is like a grave injustice. You know, it's not necessarily like this is Survivor, the the show going off the rails. Like literally last season was one of the best, you know, kind of Cla- more classic seasons that there, the show's ever had, and granted, there were a lot of like advantages and idols in last season, but it was sort you know it was it was a much more socially strategic season than than this season was. You know, it, it, you're you're right. There's some variability, and like twists create that variability. Casts create the variability. You know, when you have someone like Devons, you know, who's who's the, the number one target, and yet has you know like this like bloodhound sense for idols that creates uh, mm-hmm. variability. So. um you know, I, I don't think this is like the end of the show, right? Because like literally last season, definitely not. Can, yeah, definitely not. A, a top five season or yeah. Season. I really think that we that it would have been a more controversial morning had Devins ultimately won the season because yeah. I think that there were people that love love Rick Devins and that, look count me among the people that I, I love Rick Devins. I I, uh, I I got to talk to him last night and uh, uh, you know nice nice as can be. I thought he really got uh, unfairly treated by a lot of people online uh during the course of the season and now he goes from the person who uh was shoved down your throat as the winner to the you should have won guy and i hope that things get a little easier for him on these uh twitter and reddit streets for the time uh, for the now going forward for rick devins yeah i mean one of the things i remember saying uh, uh, when ben won was you know that this fire twist like which seemed a way for the bends of the world who were getting voted out in fourth place mm-hmm. to to make it to the end. Um, one of the things I said at the time was like, it's not you know getting that person the win doesn't necessarily make a better story. Like part of the incredible emotion of Survivor is seeing someone just come up short. Yeah, and like that's what makes the journey so so powerful. And I I mean. I, cold consolation for Rick Devins, but I really feel like that makes his story all the more moving. It's just like how hard he played and and how close he was, and yet he didn't win at all. Okay, let's uh, get into taking your calls. Now that we set the table here, let's talk to Megan in Raleigh on uh, the morning after the uh, Survivor finale. Uh, Steven, I uh, did all my uh, red carpet interviews uh, last night. Uh, very, very fun. I uh, got to talk to uh, Reem as well. So uh, that, that, I saw that a, picture of you. Real, real thrill for me last night. All right, here's, here's Megan in Raleigh. Megan, good morning. Hey, guys. Good morning good for morning. me. It's afternoon for you. Yeah, that's okay. Close enough. I've been awake for about 45 minutes. <laughs> so my question for you is this. Am I crazy or the advantage Audrey won, Aubrey won on yes. Edge of Extinction that to practice the challenge? That was not the challenge that they ultimately did. That was a pure no, part it was, of the challenge. The that first was the part. Yeah. And actually, Aubrey first really part. stumbled in that, cha- in that part of the challenge, interestingly. I like, that. Yeah, it was, the, it was like going through the ropes, like weaving through the ropes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a very physical challenge for uh, the players to uh, get back into the edge of uh, from the edge of extinction. Even more so, I think, than uh, the first time around. I think that there was a physical component to the challenge that Rick Devins won to get back in. But it just in, in talking to Reem last night, I had asked her about you know I really thought that you were going to be the person to get back in Reem. She was like, "Did did you see that challenge? Did you do you think I could do that? Compete with Captain America and Joe?" And so, yeah. So which it, one's Captain? I thought which one's Captain America? Is Chris Captain, Captain America? Captain America is uh, is Chris. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that Joe would be Thor in this scenario. Oh, I see. And who's Iron Man? Who's got the suit? Um, I don't know. Who's Iron Man out of that group? War Dog? Uh... Um, what? What? <laughs> one of the things that uh, 
Well, one of the things that I, I think must have been so, and I, I talked about this a little bit with Hannah last night, is like that must have been so hard for those contestants like Reem and like Aubrey is like sitting there knowing you're just, there's just no way you're going to win, but you can't give up. Uh -huh. So you have to like suffer for like a month and, and just with, with no realistic win in sight. I, I don't know if Aubrey necessarily was that fatalistic about it. We'd have to ask her because I think that Aubrey uh, does uh, <laughs> CrossFit and she also had the advantage to practice. So I don't think that Aubrey looked at it like she was drawing dead, like maybe Reem might have. Yeah. I mean, those challenges, though, were like very like, you know, it's not like, you know, Aubrey has excelled in Survivor Challenges. She's won a number of immunities. But but, um, you know, those were that was like a giant obstacle course challenge, which is typically typically do favor men. Yeah. All right. Megan, we want to get to a lot of calls this morning, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to uh, Brent in Cincinnati. Uh-oh. Let's go ahead and get uh, Brent in Cincinnati on the line to uh, talk with us about everything that's going on. I know a uh, Brent in oh, Cincinnati. Brent in Cincinnati. <laughs> yes, it's Brent Walgamont in Cincinnati. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay. Hey, what's up, Rob? Uh, Brent in Cincinnati. Go ahead. I don't get a what's up? Oh, he... Yeah, oh, I, I was just—I was about ready to say hello, Stephen. You know, <laughs> uh, no, when uh, when he asked, when the producer came on and asked me where I'm from, he he really wanted to know, and I was like, I'm from Cincinnati. And then he came back and said, you know, where are you from again? I'm like, I'm from Cincinnati. <laughs> okay. That's where he came from. Brent in Cincinnati. Um, yeah, I know, right? Um, look, I I I have no problem with uh, Chris as winner, as as him as the first. Just FYI. Okay. He's a great guy. Um, but the concept of him winning is just crazy to me. Um, it, it, I feel like it comes from – I'm getting a little feedback, so that's why I'm hesitating because I'm hearing my voice come back at me. But uh, – Hey, you sound good. Yeah. Also, yeah. that uh, I mean, that uh, Brent sounds a little, the calls just sounded a little low to me, uh, Cam, yeah, and uh, in, in, in in my rec in my recording that uh, they're a, they're a little low. So uh, if if there's anything we could do about that, that would be great. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, what, what I want to ask you is honestly, Rob, and I don't know to be honest how honestly you can answer this. Does Survivor have a problem with women? I I just feel like. Everything, all of the innovations, all the things that Survivor has done to evolve the game in the past two, three years has all favored men. And I feel like the show likes men better. Well, I would be careful with that. Uh, I, I think that uh, that not all men, uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, like – uh, if you are if you are a a man who is not playing a you know traditional alpha male type game, then uh, I don't think that you are necessarily well, that's what uh, favored. Um, but I do think that the 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 show is favoring people who have uh, gone and played a more aggressive type of game uh, that's out there, and uh, you know it has not gone without being noticed by me. We are now on a run of four consecutive male winners, uh, which I believe ties the longest streak uh, in the show's run, where I think that from 12 to 15, I think we had uh, four male winners in a row. And uh, that one is the more of the outlier to me. Uh, but this one definitely does feel like, you know, we had where uh, – even though Chrissy won immunities, uh, Ben was able to find idols. And then, uh, you know, uh, we had, uh, you know, w Wendell and, and Nick, I think, is uh, harder to necessarily, you know, put under this uh, uh, right. rubric of what we're, what we're looking at. But then here comes Chris, and he comes back and wins challenges. Um, I just think that it's amazing since, you know, they started this final four fire making challenges and with the advent of more advantages and idols in the game. It's not a surprise to me that the last four winners have been men. Yeah. And Although three out of the four people uh, were were men, and Julie ends up being in the in the finals, and she ends up getting uh, no votes. So I, I don't know necessarily if it's uh, uh, you know if the if the right woman got to the end, if it would be a uh, a different story. But um, yeah. I definitely hear what you're saying. I, I mean, I just, the thing I'll, I'll say is that. Uh -oh. um, it's, it's become more advantage and idol focused, right? No question about that. They're putting more advantages. They're putting more idols back into the game. And, you know, one of the things we've seen in the past couple seasons, last season being a great example, was women realizing that 
men were finding the predominance of these advantages and idols. Now, I think part of that is because of the way that these the groups kind of naturally fall into traditional gender dynamics where it's like the women are, are back at camp and the guys are going out foraging and like they kind of have more of like the cover to like look for idols as a result. And, you know, I think, you know, and hopefully we see that changing, you know, where, where, um, the, the, the women aren't doing that anymore, right? They're, go, they're, they're going out and hunting for idols just as much as the guys are. And so hopefully that awareness, you know, does maybe shift that style I mean, a little bit. I hope so because I, I was really disappointed with just the overall feeling of last night. I really feel like that the show deserves to, it, it, this situation warrants like you pounding the church altar a little bit, Rob, but it's up to you. I I, mean, I, I was just aghast. Of well, what do you want me to, what do you want me to do, Brent? It's that, it's that this is foolish. This is this survivor <laughs> hitting on itself, Rob. That like, Look, uh, like Reem, who's never even met Gavin can, <laughs> but that's not because she's a woman. No, I'm, I'm moving on to a different topic. I'm oh, okay. Just, I'm just, I'm irritated at the fact that this is what gets us because I feel like the show as a whole wants more alpha male type winners. And this is what- I, I don't at. know if it's necessarily that. I think that the show wants uh, less passive gameplay. Uh, and so- Th that's what I, I don't think that the show has an agenda about uh, we only want men to win the show because that plenty of women watch Survivor. I don't think that they are. They have an agenda, except for the agenda is that if the choice is between, you know, uh, you know, uh, Rick Devins being on on camera and having, you know, uh, witty lines and then, you know, running around and doing stuff as opposed to, you know, the Gavins and Victoria's sitting back and being more passive. They want their show well, to be more like, action driven. But Rob, it's like the chicken or the egg, though. I was talking to someone else about this. And they're like, well, Rick has a great personality and Victoria seems kind of boring. I don't know her very well. I'm like in the in the last episode, Rick had 10 confessionals and Victoria mm -hmm. had no more than four. So how, how do you even how it's no surprise to me that people come to me and say, well, Rick is so much more compelling. I feel like I know him when, of course, yeah. you do. Uh, but uh, look, uh, that 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 in terms of you know being quick and 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 witty and having one liners that that's good you can get those into confessionals uh that it's uh i i think it's it's harder that somebody like victoria i think she's more like a aubrey plaza where it's like her like i think her her humor is like very dry and uh you know is maybe not as as a quick and i mean that in terms of like uh she, she might uh you know have like some like cutting remarks that are like longer to deliver than where rick jumps in and just you know blurts things out so i, I don't i know aubrey was probably got had more time on the edge of extinction than anybody mm -hmm. right like and she she gives great confessionals aubrey is an amazing an amazing character and i think that you know like as as rob always says like they're gonna give the good stuff they're not like holding back on great confessionals from women you know because like of some like gender you know desire for gender imbalance i guess i just don't you don't show people that we can't get to know them so it's like it's like it's like a, a circle that just keeps going but uh, mm -hmm. have your positions on this and i respect them and uh like, and to be clear like i think uh, rick uh chris is a wonderful guy and i wish all the best in the world for him but uh this this, this finale as it, it was just disappointing last night to hear you talk even so and i love you to death but like expound so much on how great and what a spectacle it was and i feel like that's feeding the beast like it was a spectacle but that doesn't mean it was good hey Isn't steven it? said that but gavin should have won no but i but I, I did defend the finale itself to brent's point about for just being like like and look it took me a minute you know like i, I initially was like what on earth is happening and then i was like but i noticed i was like having a lot of fun you know yeah. <laughs> like i, I thought I it was, was like a great enjoying. finale in terms of i i yeah. was on the uh the edge of my seat there uh at the show it was wild so i saw you brent you tweeted at brian corden you uh, know, brian said i'm turning the tv off you said turn it back on well i was gonna <laughs> say he was he was talking about Rick winning, and I'm like, well, that's not going to happen now, and you, you can't believe it. So, mm. anyway, I don't want to take up all of your time. You guys are great. Okay. Uh, I don't wanna, I'm not a hater. You know, I love yes. the show. And yeah. No, my gosh, like haters is like, it's a dry, it's like, it's all I, like, I mean, that's what, you look, know. We, I, I, I always fun. know that your comments are uh, with love for, for the, the show that you love, that you want to make sure that it is uh, not going 
off the track too far. 100%. Just, like, keep it well, we, we fell in love with this show 20 years ago. You don't have to change it that much. I feel mm -hmm. like oh, man. Can you imagine Survivor thing. Africa on the air today? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, and, and I do think that the, the fire making does favor the uh, male contestants. Uh, have we seen a woman win? the? I mean, there was no woman in the fire making uh, this, uh, this season. But uh, I think that uh, Mike, Mike beat Kara last season. Uh, Wendell beat Angela, I believe. And then uh, uh, it was... Who did, did uh, Ben beat Devin? So there's only been two women in the fire, but, but it's been a, a, a male winner of the fire making challenge uh, four, four times out. And I think that the selection also favors uh, men being involved in um, getting the chance to make the fire too. And I, I actually think part of that could be could be part of gender roles too. Like like I said, like you know, it's it's weird how quickly like very stereotypical gender roles like play out at, at camp. Not like you know, and I've noticed on all of my seasons, it's like guys who want to be the fire guy. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're the fire guy. And like my first season, Token Sheens, no question, the best person at making fire was Sydney. Uh, followed by Taj, but it was always guys who were doing mm -hmm. it. You know, they were always like like striking sparks and, and blowing the fire. To Justin light. from New York is on the line as uh, we're we're talking about this. So yeah, I I mean that if you want to get on uh, Survivor for anything, I think that the fi final four fire making challenge, while exciting, uh, I think is always going to uh, favor f uh, for the most part the male contestants. Okay, all right, Justin. Justin, hello. Hey, and I, I want to add on that. Uh, the one time that a, a woman won the fire making challenge, it was a uh, Becky Thunder. It Chicago. was what? Be Be Becky. No, no, don't forget about Mama C beat Rodney Mama in uh, yeah. Worlds Apart. So, uh, you yeah, know. But, but just as far as not a great look for women, uh, I think Cook Island, that one took quite a while. That took a while. That did take a while. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. All right, Justin. Let me let's hear your question. That I feel like your uh, your your sounds a little choppy for me. Okay. Let me. Yeah. If I get a little closer, is that better? You're good. Just so, uh, but let's get your question. Um. Yeah. So I, I want to say I'm, I'm thrilled with uh, last night's outcome. My winner pick was was Chris. Uh, obviously, expect that. That was probably. Yeah. He's got kind of like a Chris Underwood look going on, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why. I, think, I don't know. Uh, but I just want to know from your perspective what you think was his death convincing Lauren to play her eye? Was it when he took off the net and fire? When he swayed uh, a majority of the jury to vote? Okay. So so best, best, yeah, is, okay. Best move for Chris Underwood. Steven, do you have a, a thought on that as we answer Justin's question? I mean, I think definitely the best and most shocking move was him taking off his immunity yeah. necklace, giving up the immunity, and going to fire to win his way into the end. It was so good for so many reasons. First, it was genuinely shocking, right? Like, it was this moment for both viewers and the jury where they're like, oh, my God, he's really doing mm -hmm. this. And in terms of, like, giving the jury spectacle, like, what a great moment. The other thing was it really, like, we, you know, we talked a little bit about, like, story and this chris sold the story of rick devins is the guy to beat and i'm the one who beat him and that was his big talking yeah. point and um i kind of think that was like the show's narrative too right like the show's narrative and I, a lot of people are like this show is all over the place there's no consistent narrative i don't think that's true the narrative of this show was like rick devins was the guy to beat and then some you know wandering knight comes in from far away yeah. and beats him and like that's the guy who they award uh, not to, to get game of thrones on it but it was like uh who's <laughs> yeah. we need a we, who will be your champion to take on the mountain uh Tyrion. Yeah. Uh, I will be your champion, and it goes and it goes better for uh, Chris Underwood as he's the <laughs> one who steps into the arena. And it, in talking with Rick Devins last night, uh, Rick De the, the show made it seem a little bit like uh, oh Devins doesn't know what he's doing, but uh, that from what I understand, this was like a, a record time for Chris Underwood, and then uh, Devins feels like that he could have beaten either Gavin or Julia in the fire making challenge. So he did such a great job of just setting up that narrative of, Hey everybody, you know what? Like he beat Devin's at his own game of, okay, I will make the compelling spectacle at tribal council and get that jury's uh, jaw to drop. When I take the necklace off, put the necklace on Julia and where we talk about so many times, Steven, where the people that get brought to the end that they get, they don't do well. Where it's yeah. like, hey, uh, I'm going to bring this person and they get no votes. Chris brought two people to the end. 
he he made, <laughs> yeah. he made Gavin and Julie both yeah. of his goats in that scenario. That's a great point. That's a really really great point. That's a, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder now, uh, will people who play in the future season, as long as this fire making challenge, will we see this be the norm? Hey, I won the final four immunity. Got to make the fire. I just don't think it's ever as clear. You know, it's so rarely this clear. We are like, this is the guy. Like the jury is cheering for him. The other contestants are literally cheering for him. Every other, every tribal. By the way, uh, one point I want to give David Bloomberg some credit. Uh, one point of his. Don't let it go to his I head. Sort of, <laughs> yeah. One point of his that I kind of like dismissed was that the contestants should have been building up their own cases mm -hmm. a little bit more uh, rather than you know applauding Rick all and, the time. And while, while you're making that point, let's bring in Josh from uh, Anderson, South Carolina. Um, but, but, you know, I, I thought like the, the whole narrative was like, well, these guys, it doesn't matter. Like if Rick's there, he wins. But then you see like Gavin's whole problem is that nobody, nobody thinks he did anything. You I know? thought like, Gavin no was more... bad at the final tribal council. I thought he did not do a good job. He hasn't thunder his lines, but he does. He's not like a super like extroverted yeah. speaker. As soon as he started talking I'm like, oh, he's backpedaling. He's he's on defense. Uh, that's not how you want to play the final tribal council. All right, Josh uh, in uh, South Carolina. What's going on? Hey guys. Josh, hello. How's it going? Hey, great. Good. How are you? Uh, my question is simple. I think this is going to have a lot. I'm going to take my headphones out. I can hear myself. Um, I think this might be like controversial. Do you think Chris oh, can no. still win the game if he doesn't have the Edge of Extinction idol? Because I feel like there's a shot where Lauren plays her idol final six for him, and Devin's could play his idol for Chris at final five. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good question. Like, does Chris does Devin does does Devin's want Chris in the game at that point? Because Devin's does give him back his idol. Now, maybe that was the whole time. So he might Yeah. Yeah, it's a really like yeah. It, not even just for loyalty. Like, does he want him there? I have no idea. My biggest like, problem with uh how last night went was I don't think that Chris should have gotten any idol when he yeah. came back into the game. Agreed. If you really if you wanted to give him something, maybe Give him an extra vote at the final six. So like, uh, I, I feel like that you could have given if you if you have to give him something, give give him something that's not okay. Well, he is going to be immune for one of these rounds if he if he makes it through. And he did get three votes at that final five tribal council, so he should have been out of the game at five. But you know, it it is it is what it is. But I just I. I hate the idea that we gave immunity to somebody who came back in the game at six he had immunity at the final seven final eight final nine final right. ten final eleven <laughs> final 12, final 12. He, so he got all that immunity so yeah. yes okay he, and, and so uh you guys said it last night and then uh you know here's a you know here's also another cookie for uh after your reward steven uh the only the only oh go ahead, no, go I just, ahead. That, so i really did not uh like that part of it uh and now again kudos to chris for uh he played everything so well yeah he played the, the game in front of him at, at the finale but um i, I kind of felt like that the devin's not giving the half an idol to him i, I just i don't know how uh how you pull that off, Steven? Does that was that like a real move that somebody could do? I mean, what was Devin's gonna do? Throw it in the ocean and then be like, "Sorry, dude, you just got played." Dave didn't give back the uh, half idol no, to Devin. He's, uh, I, he, now he said, "Like, well, I don't, I don't think I want to give it back to you until we get back on the same page." He didn't say, "I'm um, not giving it to you." Like, uh, like I guess Doctor Mike threw the strap from Lauren Rimmer in the fire at a tribal council, but I mean. Uh, that's like an all-time uh, heel move for Rick Devins, but maybe uh, does I mean does the jury does the jury turn on uh, Rick Devins if he does something so dastardly to Chris? No, no. Well, first of all, the, the one mitigating thing I want to say about that idol, which I agree, I I, I'm ag I agree that I'm against it, but the one mitigating thing is that it did require one of the other players to to play to to use it or to to give you know to give back the half and i actually think that's a relatively steep bar like that is another player who's left in the game seeing this guy who we all agree should be a huge threat making the conscious strategic decision i am going to keep this guy here mm -hmm. so it wasn't just like you know he gets this superpower he has to convince one of the people that that he deserves that superpower or that they want to keep mm -hmm. him in the game 
and I think if it was any other situation other than Rick being the, the giant target that he was and maybe Rick being the mensch that he is, um, I don't think that person would, would necessarily do also, it. Also, Rick now, is somebody who was in that same position of had to give the idol to right. somebody. like uh, had, like So he could relate on every single level of like, oh, I know what it's like to come back into the game and not have a friend. And I know what it's like to give that half an idol away and then uh, you know wait for the other person to give it back to you. So uh, that was uh, smartly played by Chris. I mean, now, but I think it is sort of splitting hairs because like, you know, is it that much better at that point, right? They're both in the final four together. The Thanks, question Josh. is like, is it better for Rick to have Chris around versus Lauren around? I, I mean, like, I don't necessarily see one or the other as being so hugely advantageous or disadvantageous to his game. Hmm. Uh, so you mean to give, to give half the idol to Lauren? No, I'm saying like if he did not give half the idol to, to Chris, the idea is that Chris would be voted out at five. Therefore, Lauren would be in the game. You know, and we're saying like, is that a huge blunder for for Rick to keep the guy in the game who eventually beat him? But like, Lauren could have been the person who eventually beat him. Like, is like yeah, from I, Rick's pers perspective at the final from five, what it sounds is like, it so much worse to have Chris than Lauren? From what it sounds like, that uh, Chris might have been the one person that could have beaten Devin's at the fire Now maybe Gavin tells a different story, but. It sounds like that Devin's knew what he was doing with the fire making, but Chris was just the best on the board at making the fire. So, well, if that's the case, then that was then that was a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> I just I, yeah. I, that, I I don't know what that looks like, and maybe I'm uh, I'm being naive about like uh, how do you not uh, you know how do you not give the idol back to the the person and like live at the camp where where you know it's just like uh is it just like Chris is like Devin's. Can I have that half the idol back? No. Nope. <laughs> Come on, Devins. What are you doing? What are you doing? like? Uh, how do you live with the person for for you a know twenty four hours? Like, An dude, evening? dude, give it back to me. No, nope, no, nope, not gonna. No, I, I, I won't do it. You're dreaming. I, I mean, if you think I'm yeah. giving you that half an idol. I mean, yeah, you're not getting that person's vote, but if, if it like, you know, if that's the edge that gets you to the win, then, then yeah. It's a tough move. I mean, that's a, that's it, a yes, tough it's move. It's a tough move. And, you know, you're like, you know, human feeling, human sentiment does come into it a yeah. lot. And certainly I, on first, first time or season. I think you'd have to do something like, uh, all right, I'll give it to you at tribal. And then when you're at tribal, just like throw it into the, the bushes, uh, like off the set, because I, I just don't know how you tell the person in the daytime, you're not giving it to them and then live. And then live with that person and not just have the person like strangle you uh, on the beach that day. Yeah. I mean, there's also like the danger of sending someone who's like that salty against you to the jury. Like, even though from all, you know, from everything we've seen, like the jury was rabidly pro Devins, um, you know, he doesn't necessarily know how rabid, <clears throat> you know, how rabid they are. And to send someone as the last juror, or I guess second to last juror in that case, uh, to the jury, just like furious, um, that's, that's, that, that is a sort of a somewhat high risk move. All right. Let's go to Holly, uh, from New Jersey on the fan line. Okay. Uh, Holly, are you there? We'll talk to uh, yes. Holly on the, hello, yes, Holly. Holly. How are you? So, hi, I have a question. My question is really like, how much do you think it was a combination of Chris's social game and social dynamics at the edge or how much of it was really bad? Final move with giving the net foot because I heard a lot of like even were asking Joe why he voted for Joe. He said like oh he just had such a bond at the edge. My question is like if he just wins the um, doesn't do any of the fire things does Chris? And I think the real question of this season. Okay, like, good, 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 good question. Uh, and uh, Holly, I'm in a little bit of trouble uh, hearing you, but I think we got the, the we got the question, which is uh, if if not for all of the theater from uh, Chris, does he ultimately come back and w uh, win the game in uh, basically, does he uh, not, uh, you know, uh, I guess it's hard because part of what he did was knocking Rick Devins out at four. So I think that presumably Devins is going to beat him if he ends up going against Devins. So it's hard to sort of parse that, Stephen. Well, let's say Devins doesn't have an idol and he loses, he doesn't have immunity. Like, let's say Rick Devins gets out by sort of a consensus vote. Chris is sitting there at the end with with the same people. I don't know. Like, I honestly think that Chris had to do something. He had mm -hmm. to give the edge people 
a reason. You know, yeah. he had to be able to say, and I talked a little bit about this with Hannah last night, how, you know, the, the, the contestants really care about the theme of the season. Like, to, like they believe. War Dog the said theme the theme, theme is not on trial. You are. Right. And so, like, you know, he has to say, like, I came back from the edge and then I did this because I was on the edge. And if he doesn't have anything where he can say like that, say that, like, maybe they they don't award him the win. But, you know, it, it was probably a lower bar than what he did. Yeah. You know, he did so much. He probably had to do like one of those 10 things. You know, it's also interesting. And I think that this is a factor of these big juries. When you take a look at the votes that Gavin got versus the votes that Chris got, when we, when we look at the uh, Gavin votes, they were Rick, they were Lauren, they were Kelly and oh. Aurora. And for the most part, you know, three out of those four were the people that were in the game very late and uh, basically played most of the time. And then, and then also Kelly, who was, you know, a, a Gavin fan. And everybody else from, who uh, you know, voted out earlier were the Chris votes. And, you know, it's been interesting to see a lot of these juries end up get split. The Dominic and Wendell was the same thing. The five people that were out earlier voted for Dominic. The five people who were out later voted for Wendell. And uh, when you look at the votes between Nick and Mike, uh, it was also very similar that uh, a lot of the people that were voted out later were uh, votes for Mike and people voted out earlier were votes for Nick. So that the flashier player tends to get these votes from the early jury members and the people that played more of the subtle game, uh, more of the social game, they get the votes from the later jury members. That's really interesting. I mean, there's obviously a lot of reasons. I mean, you have a 13 that, person know. jury. Uh, the deck <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of early members. Social player. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it's really, that's, that's a really, really interesting observation. Whereas if you have a seven person um, jury, then, uh, then, uh, you know, the, if you have the last four, then, uh, you're good. The 13, yeah. I mean, Gavin was so saying too, like, like, uh, all, all the people who voted against him were the people he betrayed. And the fact that he was a social player meant that in order to vote people out, he really had to betray them. Right. Like he had to vote out the people in his own alliance. And, you know, that's a sting that does take a lot of time to recover from. Um, and so maybe it's not surprising that those people voted against yeah. him. Yeah. Whereas obviously Chris did not have to do that. Right. He voted out, I mean, he voted out Reem, who voted for him, but they had a lot of time to heal those wounds. Here's Cliff from New York. Let's get Cliff on the line here on Fan Cred as we're talking with Stephen Fishback the day after the Survivor finale. Cliff from New York. Cliff. Hey, Cliff. What's up, guys? Uh, yes. One thing, I, I am a genuine. I love all Survivor, the twists, whatever. Not a big deal to me. I'll take it all in. What I wanted to ask about is... Chris addressing Gavin at the final drive. Oh, that didn't go over well. It didn't go over well, but I thought that it might have helped get him gain War Dog and some of the more aggressive players' votes. What do you guys think? I, I mean, I don't think it's that unusual for like contestants in the final tribal to call each other mm -hmm. out at the final tribal. The fact that it didn't yeah, go over JT well, maybe did that to you, right, Stephen? Yeah, but a lot of people yeah. do it, and 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 often will like you know I've I I have written in many seasons about how like what a great move it was for this contestant to throw that contestant under the bus or like recontextual you know like so I, I don't think it's that it's that rare I mean maybe with this giant jury that are also desperate to have their last word that it's you know <laughs> they, they were upset that but, they, uh, they uh, uh, we'll ask time. the questions around here Chris <laughs> yeah relax yeah. who do you think you are uh, I don't think it changed anybody's votes I, I think that War Dog was very invested in uh, Chris coming back in uh you know speaking with war dog briefly uh he was telling me about how you know they talked a lot on the edge of extinction what things were going to be like for the person uh what the strategy should be for the person who comes back into the game so i, I don't think that war dog's vote was at all uh in in question so i, I think that even though people said they hadn't made up their minds I, I think that you know chris did come in with a lot of votes in his pocket and i don't think that that necessarily changed anything it is wild to think that like they he had you know it wasn't just a month away it wasn't just the you know the time to heal personal bonds they basically came to like a strategic consensus with like 
how many people? 13 really smart Survivor players, including some, you know, three-time players of how to play the game when you got in. Chris isn't just coming out back with, like, perspective. He's coming back with a battle yeah. plan that's been forged by a, like, a yeah. whole army yes. of what, What's better, having uh, Rob and Sandra tell you what to do or uh, 10 <laughs> other Survivor players? <laughs> hey. It's a tough one. Yeah. Smart up, Sestinino. You know what's up. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, Cliff, thank you so much for the call, okay? All right. I didn't even think about how next season you've just got. Oh, uh, I'm so excited. You know, I'm so thrilled. You're set. I'm, you're set I'm, for I'm, impersonation. I'm thrilled for, uh, uh, I, I, you know what? If people, if people don't like it, then, uh, you know, uh, what, whatever. Uh, I'm, 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 Rob, who sounds more like Reem? You or Reem? Mm -hmm. You know what, dude? Uh, <laughs> I, I love, I love, I love Reem. Put her out there. Let Reem play again. Uh, Jacob from Chicago is on the fan line. Let's go ahead and talk to uh, Jacob. Okay, Jacob, are are you there, buddy? Let's go ahead and uh, get him on on the fan line. Stephen, uh, are you pumped up for the Island of Idols? I'm I am. Okay. Up for all the uh, K guys, can you? Hear me? Oh, here's Jacob. Jacob hey, how are you? Up too. Okay. Jacob, what's going hey on? Hey guys, I'm pumped. I'm I'm pumped for all the impressions next year. Yeah. Oh my god, you guys are wearing the same shirt. Oh, I mean, not exactly. Not really. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hey guys, I got a couple questions for you. Um, first of all, I was thinking about Julie being another zero boat mom finalist. You know, she's kind of in the uh, the archetype of a Shelly, Monica, Dawn, Mama C. I guess got one vote. So We've lost. Uh, we, uh, say, sorry, say it again. Problem when it comes to these women who seem to can't, they seem to not be able to get, you know, to be taken seriously when it comes to final travel. Uh, well, but Chris, Chrissy, I mean, what was interesting about like, you know, Chrissy had that, you know, was sort of cast as like the mom, right? And she like both played into and played against that sort of that sort of classic archetype, and you know, narrowly lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's sort of dangerous to say every, every every woman who plays Survivor that's in her late 30s or 40s is, you know, uh, it is the same. You know, uh, to me, Mama C is not the same as, uh, right. you know, um, uh, a Julie or a Chrissy. Um, you know, I think that they all have uh, different attributes. It seemed like that the the jury, you know, was... Uh, felt like that Julie was emotional and also did not have a, a resume. And I feel like that they had to do a lot of caretaking of Julie. And I feel like that she did not have a, a lot of moves or even a story that she could own in terms of the game. And it felt like that earlier in the game, when the narrative was comma strong and she was sort of uh, being one of the co-pilots of, comma strong with Eric and Ron that was where I think that she had a claim to the game but once the Eric vote happened that was really yeah. where uh, she lost her footing and she tried to claim ownership of a move that it seemed to offend uh, people on the jury that she claimed ownership of Julia going home. Uh, Julia herself uh, seemed to balk at that. So did War Dog and Rick Devins, people who were more active in that tribal council when she jumped ship. And then she really never had a solid footing. She talked about being the pilot of her own smaller plane at that point in time. But she never really, you know, uh, dictated a vote in the minds of the jury. And I think that that's important to be able to you know say why you were the best uh so she claimed that her emotions were a strength i think that people uh viewed them as a weakness and so uh it, it would not be yeah, I, I thought she had a i thought she had a really poor final trial, yeah which probably contributed to her sorry i just keep getting feedback uh, no, but Maybe you've got to have the main you know, okay. performance better than some people we see in both get you know, final travel before she did win a couple of individual immunities and she got herself there. Yeah. Is that enough? Probably not. Uh, I, I do think that in this final tribal council format more than ever, I do think it's, uh, it's really important to, you know, own, you know, own what you did, put the narrative out there of this was my game. This is what I, this is what I did and give the, give the jury, you know, a story they can sink their teeth into. And uh, Julie, d d Julie did not have that. And, uh, what was it because she's a mom or because of the, you know, the game that ultimately got her there? Uh, you know, that's for the jury to decide. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, Sandra's a mom. Um, she's won twice. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I do have one more quick question. All right, real quick. I'm wondering, yeah, we've.
Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Say, say one, one, more, one more time, Jacob. Yeah, uh, the, the, the moving the headphones in and out is killing the mic. Sorry. Arm, so just keep yeah. it in one spot. No, it's okay. We've had uh, FireMaker winners win the game three out of four times since that right. started. You know, I think it adds to our resume in an impressive way that gets votes. So I'm wondering, is that going to become too much of an automatic thing that that twist becomes moot because it becomes such an automatic win? Uh, we can hope so, but I, I don't think I don't think that that is uh, going to be the case because uh, we saw Mike White ultimately uh, make the fire last season and uh, have a not so strong final tribal council performance and ultimately lose the game to Nick. So I, I don't know if it's an automatic uh, to make the fire and win. Yeah, and as you said, uh, Carolyn uh, also lost to to, to Mike. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that was not the fire making twist, but that was fire making. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Trevor in Vancouver on the fan line. Uh, Trevor, are you there, Stephen? As we uh, are sitting here at the first day of the Survivor off season, where when we reconvene, we'll talk about Boston Robin Sandra in season thirty nine. Okay, uh, I can't wait. It's gonna be Trevor. So fun. Hey, how's it going? How are you, buddy? Hey. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. Yeah, so I thought the, the finale was actually pretty entertaining. I hope they never do the twist again, but I thought it was super entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's I how know. a lot of people feel like. It's yeah. like a fun one-off, but that's, I think that's I was good. most confused about uh, Victoria's final travel council vote. I was yeah. shocked that she voted for uh, River One. Chris. Yeah, well, I, I have some insight into that. I talked to Victoria on uh, the red carpet and uh, um, in my interviews uh, that are up on uh, Rob Has a Podcast. And I asked her, I said, Victoria, I would have bet anything you were a Gavin vote. And she said, well, you know, I felt like that Gavin betrayed me at the final six and I was mad at him. And so he, I, didn't, I didn't vote for him. And when I said – Isn't that a reason to vote – to vote for him? Nope. Well, not for everybody's different. Not for Victoria. She said right. nobody should ever trust me, and she she told me, and I said I turned around and said, "Well, Gavin, you've got my vote." And she said, "I did that so because I hoped that everybody would vote him out after that." Yeah, I did think wow. it was a weird thing to say if if she wanted him to win because that would create a huge target on him. So, as always, Victoria was in the right. Yeah, uh, it was like know. the reverse Davy from. Uh, for, or actually, I guess it was the same as Davy uh, because uh, who who did this and Mike White was like, uh, you know, uh, I I did, and then well, you got my vote tonight. So if somebody says yeah. that you have my vote, uh, I think that it's suspect on the way out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah that yeah, that was what other- Victoria's thinking was. Other quick thing is, is, is if uh, hypothetically, if Chris would have played again, is he a target? Is he going all the, the way? Is he getting blown It's a good question. Way? I mean, is he like more of a threat now? Um, I think he's probably. painted with the same uh, <laughs> Joe brush, Stephen, where up, oh, yeah. like you got to get this. This guy is going to win all the challenges after the merge. You know, it's it's ironic because uh, I, I know you tweeted something uh, similar about this, where we said coming in, oh. This season is designed for a Joe win. Watch, because Joe, he's going to win. He wins the challenges. He'll get voted out. He can come right back in and win these challenges at the end of the game. And Well, not exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't Joe, but it was somebody from the Joe mold Other Joe. who was able yeah, to take it, advantage of this. And it really almost was Joe. And it's an interesting I, – I would have. It, it is such an interesting question. Like, would Joe have been able to pull it out had it been actual? Yeah, Joe? and – this question, I did not ask uh, War Dog this question, but I was in, uh, I heard War Dog ask this question, and he says that no, uh, that J- would, Joe could not have done what Chris did. Because he couldn't have finessed that final six vote? Yes. He, I mean, but he might have been immune at that yeah. point. Like, Joe is a better According cha- to better War Dog, better. that it was, it was not the fact that he, that he came back and won, it was that he came back and played. That's interesting, and that's always been the the, the critique of Joe, uh, even in Cambodia, was that he just he's not really a gamer, you know, yeah. he's a great challenge competitor, but he's not. Stephen, what do you think of Joe's new haircut? He looks handsome with any haircut. Yeah, yeah. He needed at least a trim, at least a trim. I mean, it really was like I mean, you know, it was it was getting long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll see if it saps him of his strength like he predicted. All right, thank you so much, Trevor. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do maybe uh, let's do two more calls and uh, start to start to wrap up as we uh, head to the top of the hour. Let's go to Connor in New York on the fan line. Okay. Uh, let's uh, bring in so many people in New York, Stephen. Yeah, it's a great city. <laughs> it's, it's in state and state. Yeah. Uh, oh, great right. state. Here's Connor. Connor, how are you? Hey, Connor. <clears throat> I'm good. How are you? 
great. Good. Uh, yeah, my question is, so Aubrey and David are two players that seem to, in the past, have seemed to really value strategic gameplay, um, especially Aubrey, who maybe lost to someone because of a bitter jury. Mm -hmm. What do you think of their decision to vote for Chris over someone who is more silent and strategic like Gavin? Mm -hmm. Look, well, it's funny, like the, 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 the Michelle, I mean, there are Michelle Chris parallels, right? Yeah. Where like Michelle is basically quiet the entire game. And then in the, the last episode, just like turns it on, wins challenges. But um, I think a different story in terms of like the edit. Sure. You could, you could say that, but I mean, Aubrey spent more days in the game with Chris than she did with almost anybody else. I mean, she was on right. the edge of extinction with Chris for easily. I mean, if Aubrey goes out, what day 12 or 13, and then they come back into the game. So she's on the edge of extinction with Chris for, you know, 22, 23 days. Chris might have been her best right. friend in the whole game. Right. It's, it's, and, and Hannah, Hannah made the really good point uh, last night. You know, we've, we've always thought, we've talked about how, like, these, like, of course, they're going to want to vote for someone who they've built these bonds with over time at the edge of extinction. Hannah made the, the sort of additional point that, you know, Chris played the game they all fantasized Could have been for me. themselves. Like every one of them was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to win immunities and I'm going to play idols and I'm going to give up fire making, you know, and like he just played this like fantasy game that they, they were projecting for themselves. And so, you know, like how do they not award that? Right. Yeah. I was thinking that maybe they wanted to validate that they could win if they came back. Yeah, I think that's probably it. It's like otherwise, like what, what was I doing out there? If like if yeah. if I could never have won even if I played the perfect, you know, four days, five days, um, why was I there at all? So right. like, yeah, yeah. The, tr the theme was not there. on trial, Connor. <laughs> yeah. But well, Hannah, again, like, so sorry that I keep referring to Hannah. You should, you should listen to that podcast. It's a great podcast okay. with Hannah last night. Hannah said, um, that the twist won, you know, kind of like, it wasn't like, yeah. Even yeah. like, like Chris won. It was like the twist won. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Connor, thank you so much. Yeah, Stephen. Uh, in t in terms of the twist one, is there anything that the players in the game could have done to prevent the twist from winning, one way or another? Yeah, vote Chris out at the final six. I, yeah, it's but that, wild. but then, but uh, then uh, Rick Evans is probably going to win. No, why? Like, the, and then they all have the chance to beat him at fire. Um, but if if uh, you know, the, they have this clear shot at Chris, and honestly, like. For me, a lot of why I was okay with Chris's win is that he's he did survive this one vote where he wasn't immune and he didn't have an idol, mm -hmm. you know, his own his own idol. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, but the other contestants were like tripping over themselves to to give to give yeah. that to him. And I think and, you know, Chris as a player, I think demonstrated a a very impressive skill set in terms of uh, coming back where that he could well be a triple threat that ultimately was taken out too soon where I think that he demonstrated a lot in a short amount of time. He kind of got uh, voted out of the game in very wacky circumstances where he kind of yeah. got framed for something that, uh, you know, he, he talked to War Dog about a plan and then that got back to Kelly Wentworth of Chris is trying to vote you out. But it was really David Wright and Devins that were sort of pushing that agenda and Chris wanted to talk things through with War Dog, and so he sort of got was framed as the architect of trying to get Kelly Wentworth out of the game when he wasn't. And so uh, I, I don't know if Chris did a lot wrong the the first time through to get voted out of the game. So I, I don't think he wins if he doesn't get voted out of the game uh, that early on, based on the way that isn't that so went. funny? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He had um I so I actually I've spoken to Wardog about that vote and Wardog has has told me that it was it was not just the sort of information shuttling it was also that he kind of wanted to isolate yeah. Kelly more so that that and, um but and, and Wardog you know, also my, said, my, you know he he identified Chris as a really good player and and somebody who was a threat that needed to go but my my blog for that for that episode was called In Defense of Chris. You know, I thought it was a mistake to vote him out yeah. then. So, um, you know, obviously it was a mistake to vote him out then because he ends up winning the season okay. by dint of that uh, elimination. All right, let's do one last call. Let's do Bodie in Connecticut. Okay, uh, if if Bodie is there, okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get him on the fan line this morning. Hello. Bring us okay. home, Bodie. Bodie. Yeah. So I thought that it was really interesting at uh, final for when Chris was allowed to pick for Julie, who she would bring to the end. Yeah. Uh, because she was the one with immunity. So I was thinking hypothetically, what if Julie said, no, I'm not going to bring Gavin. I'm going to bring 
I I'm think you, Chris. Yeah, based on what we saw with uh, you know the Dominic Abate thing of you know we talked this through like well, would would Dominic even be allowed to do that? Uh, I'm pretty sure that the Survivor producers said to Chris, "Hey, if you want to do this, you get to pick the the okay. person." So, because uh, I think they they wanted somebody to to make this move. So I think they want spectacle though. If Julie had objected and the two of them are like fighting over like who's who's not getting immunity, mm -hmm. I'm sure they would have let that play out too. Yeah. But like Julie wasn't about to object in that. And I don't think they were gonna because she knew Chris was the best fire maker. Right. I, but I don't think that they would allow that moment to get ruined where I, I think that they have to give Chris some confidence of like, hey, if I do this, do I get to pick who I do? And then yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. You get to ultimately do it. And it and if Julie wants to object i think that jeff will overrule her objection i it's, it's, it's interesting so so this is the next stage right now that someone's given up immunity now the next person has to object to receiving yeah, no we all want to make the fire jeff put four <laughs> put four things four in there of us go. four of us to go on fire first yeah. two to make fire or or, yeah. or first three to make fire the final three yeah so if julie had been uh, like after getting given immunity and she had said, I want to give immunity to Gavin. Would that have been like shut down? And Julie doesn't have. If Julie wanted to pass. Like well, yeah, well, so this is interesting. So if Julie wanted to hypothetically say, Jeff, and I would like to take the immunity necklace and I would like to give it to Devin's. Uh, yeah. Somehow, like we have to, Chris's move was too huge tonight. He's the biggest yeah. threat. Somebody needs to beat Chris <laughs> in the fire making yeah. challenge. Could yeah, you re gift yeah, yeah. the immunity necklace? I think that that's the best. Well, yeah, why couldn't she step up? I, I, that, I think she could be able, she'd Jeff, be able to. I'm jumping ship. I can't yeah. do this. We can't, we can't stop Chris. He's now the biggest threat. I'm giving my immunity to Devin's and I'm going to take Chris on in the fire making challenge. And Devin's like, hold on. I'm getting played. I need to give the immunity to Julie. I need to beat Chris for my narrative. <laughs> So Nobody wants it. Throw the immunity necklace in the fire. <laughs> that would be such a great move. The only so way to win is to not play. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if Julie can't pick somebody else to take with her, she could give the necklace to somebody else and have them and require that they pick her. If But why would they want that? Why would she want that? Because you don't want to be the one taken. There seems like yeah. there's no world where this is relevant, but... <laughs> <laughs> go on <laughs> i feel like that's most of the internet yeah there's no world with it where this is relevant but yeah yeah i i just think that it's an interesting thing to think about. Oh, it is an interesting, all right it's, it's an interesting question. bodie thank you so much okay yeah no thank you all for right me. uh steven this was so much fun to get to uh talk things through with you the day after we've never done this yeah, this is great because we have a little more perspective, but not as much perspective as we'll have. So, so uh, I, it's it's like a nice level of like I'm, I still feel very immersed in last night, but I also still feel I feel a little bit distant. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that this I think with with uh, more time that this is going to be I don't know maybe, maybe it'll be seen as worse with more time. You know, maybe like when I I don't know if like with more time people will sort of like come around to Chris or with more time if like when like the fun of the show has sort of faded it, people will be, be even more outraged yeah by as we get further away because it feels like that Chris coming back robbed Rick Devins of the win so yeah you already Which seems like, a, like you, yeah. you already were headed for a scenario where somebody who was voted out of the game was going to win and instead somebody who was voted out more recently and out of the game for longer came back and won yeah so yeah. it's it's real it's really wild there's many there's many different layers in this i think that uh that there are a lot a lot of rick devins fans who feel like uh rick devins was robbed uh, that you and you and hannah really made a great case of why gavin should have been the winner of the season and i think that that's a a, a compelling case as well, and I think there's a, a, a lot of people that are just uh, you know here for the thrill of uh, Chris coming out of nowhere. <laughs> really, if you yeah. would have asked me at 4:30 yesterday, what chance does Chris Underwood have to win the game? I would have said one percent. I mean, yeah. we never even saw him on the edge of extinction, uh, and we, yeah. I mean, we and we did see him a little bit, but there was probably like a three or four episode stretch where we didn't even see him on the screen on the edge of extinction. And I complimented Chris Underwood for this uh, last night, but he was so off the social media radar. I was like, uh, in my head, the story I told myself was, oh, well, Chris was a big fan, but 
he just had a bad experience, and I think he that, right. that he but he's burnt out on Survivor. I, I don't think the guy tweeted once during the season. That's discipline. Good for him. Good, Good for him. For him. You know? And he and he he was so proud of himself. He's like, yeah. He's like, I feel like I really I I owed it to you know Jeff and Matt to really play my part, and he did it. And, and kudos to Chris. Yeah, We're truly, truly kudos to Chris. Um, I guess that's the uh, the big takeaway. Like, what a. I mean, I wonder, like, I, I, well, whatever. Like, it's, it's, uh, like, there's not, there's not much more to say. Not much it. more to say. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, despite there not being much more to say, uh, <laughs> I will, uh, be with Josh Wiggler later on today on our, uh, feedback show on the Wiggle Room after the finale. So we'll get Josh's take on everything that went down in, uh, this very wild season of Survivor. Josh is my favorite tweet of the night. What did he say? He said, "When you think, when everyone thinks you're Dre, Dre Bergen, but you're actually Devons, and he wrote D E V O N S, and it was a picture, mm-hmm. it was a gift of okay. Devon from uh, from uh, Survivor this 35. Was not an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, we'll get into everything with Josh, and Josh was also on location for season 39, and he has an article up today uh, where him and Mike Bloom talked with Boston Rob and Sandra. So we'll uh, get Josh's uh, take on what that was like to be on the set of Survivor 39 as well. So uh, that's coming up in the Wiggle Room, and then still much more to come. I have a This Week in Survivor coming up with Jordan Kalish with a big surprise guest coming up on hmm. Monday. Uh, and then I've also got everything uh, coming up with, I talked to a lot of people very interested in talking about their game and uh, the postseason interview series uh, coming your way. But Steven, I'm sure, I'm sure they're desperate they to be interviewed about they their are, games. They are, uh, to a person. <laughs> they seem very, very excited to be able to tell their story. Steven, uh, great job. Uh, very excited to have one last chance to talk with you, Steven Fishback. Yeah, this was great, Rob. We we never really got a proper goodbye, and so I'm glad that now you know you were busy hobnobbing with the glitterati at the finale. Yes. So I'm glad that now we have a chance to really talk about the episode, you know, decompress and just stare each other in the eyes one, one last, last time, time before we reconvene next All right. September. All right. So no, well, I'll talk to you on Sunday night uh, when we get into the uh, Game of Thrones finale. But then after that, well, yeah, but that's, that's a different. But then after, that's like yeah, after that, that, I'll yeah. talk to you in, in September. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks, everybody at FanCred for uh, putting this together. And we uh, will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.